podcast. My name is Julianne and I am your host and it has been a little while. I have recorded since the last one that I published however I was not in a very good space at the time. I was incredibly tired. Um, I think I was becoming unwell or I was unwell and I recorded, I edited, it was all ready to be uploaded and I decided not to because it was just awful. <laughs> so that is why there hasn't been um, a podcast for a little while. I have been sick, Simon has had work, uh, uh, leave, I'm sorry, um, yeah, Simon's had leave, we've had Easter, it's just kind of felt like one thing after another and uh, I've just not been able to quite get there to podcast but this week I am pretty much back to normal, I am uh, back to the dye pots this week and uh, I thought well it's Thursday, it's podcast day, I haven't done one for a little while, let's do it. So today has been, a it's quite cold today, um, it's been incredibly rainy and I've just had some lunch so um, I'm feeling a little bit sluggish after lunch. I usually record before lunch so that I'm nice and sprightly and, uh, and bright without all my blood supply going down to my digestive uh, region. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I've had lunch and uh, here we are. I'm hoping not to let this go too long. Just a couple of little things. Um, one thing really. I uh, will be moving in August and uh, as such we uh, need to get rid of some stuff. So I have been doing a de-stash over on Instagram and on Ravelry. And uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of yarn on there currently. I've got a few books left and um, I've got some beads. I'm going to be eventually having some fabric and things like that on there. So if any of that sounds uh, good to you and you'd like to grab some things uh, a little bit cheaper than retail or um, even very much cheaper than retail, um, head over to Lovebird Lane D Stash on Instagram or you can find me on Ravelry as Lovebird Lane. So if you can help me out in getting rid of some of this stuff and raising a little bit of money, um, that would be much appreciated. And thank you so much to any of you who have already purchased from that. It really helps me out a heap. All right, I guess um, we can talk about what I've been working on. I actually haven't finished anything for a little while, I don't think. Not since the last time we spoke. Um, I've been relatively monogamous on um, my projects that I have been working on. I do have three to talk about today, works in progress. And I don't believe you've seen any of these. Uh, I know definitely two of them not. No. Nope. I think it was the last uh, episode that I recorded that I didn't like that I spoke about the third one. So yeah, you haven't seen any of these. And uh, I guess without further ado, I should get on with it. <laughs> I'm not doing these in any particular order. It's essentially just how I've picked them up. And this first one that I have picked up is, it's actually a test knit for my friend Jess, who is the Sweater Collective, who you've probably heard me talk about a million times on this podcast. And uh, she has a new garment pattern um, coming out. And I can never remember the name of it or how to say it. Sorry, Jess. Um... Kellitris, I think is what it is. Um, it's, I did do a Google because I'd never heard that word before and it turns out it is a variety of tree. So um, yes, it's a, a t-shirt and I'm doing something a little bit different because uh, it is written for a wool yarn. I am doing this in a linen and cotton. So um, this is how far I am. I am probably probably two thirds the way through my uh, raglan increases. And um, so I'm not quite ready to split for sleeves, but you can see it's getting quite bunched up uh, on the needles because I am uh, getting quite a few stitches on here. And basically it's a V-neck uh, shirt, um, which you can, that's the front of it here. So you can kind of see maybe <laughs> that that's a v, v neck at the front and it has this really awesome um detail on the let's try a different one where the needles aren't 
um, yes, it has like this really awesome like a uh, slip stitch kind of pattern that creates um get the end out of the way um creates like chevrons on the raglan increases so yeah um this has probably been getting the bulk of my knitting time just recently see i'm dropping stitches because i've got so many stitches on this needle um yeah so this has probably been getting the bulk of my knitting because obviously it's a test knit there is a deadline it needs to get done um, yeah, so that's what I've been working on mostly and um, Yeah, I'm looking forward to splitting the sleeves because then that means no more increases and things like that um, I can just knit round and round and round. So what the yarn is that I'm using I have it here um, This is knit picks Lindy chain and that's a 70% linen 30% cotton uh, blend uh, This is the colorway ash and this is actually a frogged project. That's why it's um, not in the donuts that they actually come in. It's in uh, little wound balls. Um, because I was knitting the Astonish top, um, which is also a pattern by Knit Picks. Um, but I knit on it. I stopped for a really, really long time. And then I didn't know where I was up to. And I was just getting confused. So I thought, we're just going to frog this and we're going to try again later. So um, this is, and I mean, I've got two lots of ash um, in the same quantities. Um, according to the pattern, I don't have enough yardage um, in, because uh, I've got two different dye lots. I've got the same amount of both dye lots. Um, according to the pattern, I don't have enough um, in either dye lot to do this project but I know um, designers always add a little bit of um, you know um, wiggle room I guess in their yardage um, uh, recommendation so I'm hoping I can scrape this in uh, with one of my batches and save the other one to redo my astonish top at a later time so yes that is my Kalitris tea and um, yeah I'm Pretty happy with it. The linen is an interesting um, experience. Uh, the knitting does feel quite rough. It feels like it's going to be a little bit annoying to wear, but I do know that linen gets quite soft and um, lovely and drapey after a few washes and wears. I don't have a dryer, so I can't beat the crap out of it like people have um, recommended online. But I do have a front load washer, which is quite vigorous. So <laughs> I will be putting it through the washer after it's done and see if we can uh, beat some softness into this linen. I would just like to mention too, in case you can hear it, Granger is sitting in the same room as me. He is on his bed with his little j uh, jumper on um, just to my right. So if you do hear snoring or anything like that, that would be Granger. <laughs> Alright, so the next thing that I can talk about is something that I only cast on last night and um, it's because pretty much I found this yarn uh, while I've been going through the D stash and um, actually that's why we're in the lounge room again this week as well is because my craft room literally looks like a bomb has hit it because there is stuff absolutely everywhere. Not only because of Lovebird Lane business kind of bits and pieces because I've got a couple of very exciting things coming up. Um, but also the D stash. There's literally stuff everywhere. But anyway, I found this ball um, of yarn and this is left over from um, a sweater that I knit, the White Horse sweater, which is by Caitlin Hunter. Um, it is Bendigo Woolen Mills Milky Way, which is um, a wool and milk fiber blend. And I love this. I've, I've deep did de stash the other colorway of this that I had because it was just not something that I would ever wear and funnily enough this is kind of blue uh, kind of green it's kind of a gray blue green color and although it's not strictly a color that I would purchase now I still adored this color hence why I've used it and my white horse sweater is actually one of my favorite sweaters to wear 
when it gets cold because I made it very long. I didn't make it cropped at all like the pattern. I made it very long with a high-low hem, so it's a little bit longer at the back. Um, not, not super different, but I did put some short rows in the back, so it is a little bit high-low. And I made full-length balloon sleeves with big long cuffs. So I love that jumper. I wore it to death last winter after I had finished knitting it. Um, and I found this leftover from that project. So um, yeah, it's lovely and soft. I really, really like this yarn. Um, I kind of wish <laughs> Bendigo Wool Mills would bring it back because I really, really love it. Um, so this is, what color was this? I can't even think. I think the one that I sold was Orion. Um, it was like a quite uh, luminous blue color. So it wasn't really the navy blue that I enjoy wearing. Yeah, I can't remember what the color name of this is you can't get it anyway it's it's discontinued so um i didn't look up the pattern name for this either but i believe it's called the caramel hat it is by tin can knits and um i like i said i only started it last night and this is a hat i don't know what type of hat you would call it it's not i guess it's kind of like a slouchy be beanie but it's kind of a cloche as well um marion is losing her mind she is inside because obviously it's rainy and cold outside and she's kind of losing her mind so please i hope you can't hear that and it's not bothering you too much but anyway it's kind of a cloche because it has like a band that you pick up and knit the body of the hat so this bit basically goes around like this ah. um yeah so this goes around your head like this and then it will have stitches that get picked up and knit back because the weather has suddenly got quite cool i mean obviously we're in the second month of uh well, third month actually of autumn and uh because today is the second of may um and yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit cold around the bonds, um, around my neck and around the top of my head. So, um, which, you know, I was expecting it. That's why I've been knitting myself, myself cowls and um, wearing hats. So, yeah, I, I just thought that this, because it was a great amount. I had about 180 yards left. I thought that would be a really good amount to... Um, knit a hat out of so that is what I'm doing and I wanted something slouchy because I don't really like beanies beanies don't really suit me because I do have this big round face that's always out um so I don't really like beanies so I was looking for something a little bit more slouchy so yeah this is what I have decided to do so it has like this lace um kind of border and it's lace and cable so there's like cable crosses as well as a little bit of lace um, and it kind of, I guess, creates kind of like a braided leaf kind of design, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, I just picked this up last night. Each repeat is really quite quick. It's only 10 rows and uh, I need to do 12 repeats and I think I'm up to seven or eight now. So I'm nearly done with my um, brim and then I can pick up and knit the body of the hat. And I've got it on a super long <laughs> cable because eventually I'm going to uh, magic loop the hat because it's just a stockinette body on the hat. So that's really all I can say about that at the moment. I'm just knitting on the brim. So yes, I guess I can move on to the last project, which is the one that I'm most excited about. Okay, let's talk about the exciting one. This is a no frills cardigan. So you guys know that I love the no frills sweater. I haven't worked much on my newest sweater uh, you know that I knit one um, before I cast on a second one I the last time I worked on it was at a friend's birthday and I didn't really get much done because my knitting mojo wasn't really with me that day I was too interested in socializing and chatting with everybody um, but this is a no frills cardigan so I had some Knit Picks gloss in my uh, stash for quite a while I did originally buy it um, because I was copying Kristen of Vaughan Vines, um, Vivid Blanket. She was doing a Tin Can Knits Vivid Blanket in the colours that I purchased. And I ended up getting some, uh, fibre from Hilltop Cloud, uh, and they were, um, like, um, mini pieces of fibre, so it created mini skeins, and I've actually decided to knit my Vivid Blanket out of the mini skeins. I'm not sure if I've shown it on the podcast recently. I think I did way back in the beginning, because it's been on the needles for a really long time. Um, 
and so I didn't need this yarn for that project so it's been a couple of different things it was a uh, a design that I was working on um, which I frogged and um, yeah so I've decided to make a cardigan I wanted to I, I had three colors I wanted to make a big long line cardigan because I love a long line cardigan I'm not really into short cropped cardigans um, I mean I don't really like anything cropped but um, a lot of cardigans are sort of around the hip area and I prefer something that comes right down to sort of my knees um, if it's going to be a cardigan so uh, I was searching and searching and I couldn't find anything quite right and then I then I saw no frills and I'm like I'm searching for cardigans. How did the no frills sweater get in here? And turns out, hallelujah, it's a no frills cardigan. So I went, that is it, 100%. And um, so I cast it on. Now this has got a lot of uh, balls of yarn attached to it. I was working on it uh, and I had six balls of yarn attached to it because I had three, uh, let me show it to you. So I'm doing, the neckline so this is the neckline um in one of the colors this is uh hawk i believe it's called so it's nitpix gloss hawk and um i've held it uh doubled with my own uh fluff butt base and i dyed it in my graphite colorway um so that's that that's my um and uh so i had one ball of each of the hawk plus a uh, fluff butt um, so that I could do the two borders at the end and then I had the main color and a fluff butt so I did originally have six balls of yarn attached to this but I have knocked it down to four um, I ran out of one of my balls of fluff butt so I basically am just using one ball of fluff butt and carrying it along the whole way um, and swapping it out with the with um, whatever color I'm using um, at the time so I've got balls of yarn flying everywhere here so that is the hawk color that's a really nice sort of dark gray then um, the other one was called robot so that's what I've used um, for the shoulder area of my uh, cardigan and I'm currently using velveteen um, which is this really lovely sort of mauvey purple so let's put this over there <laughs> um, so yes I have separated for the sleeves um, it's a very big oversized cardigan I believe it's supposed to have about 10 inches of ease on this one um, and I'm just loving the way that the hand dyed fluff butt is giving the commercially dyed yarn a hand dyed, a hand dyed look to it so you can see how mild and like light and dark that is like I'm using a tonal hand dyed yarn and I've recently uh, moved on to my second color which is the velveteen here um, and then the bottom of the cardigan uh, I worked out I've done my swatch I did actual calculations for this guys um, just to make sure um, I knew how far to knit so you can see I've got my little stitch markers on here um, I worked it out that I need to do 80 rows each of the robot and the velveteen and um, the bottom will just be finished off with the hawk so um, yeah it'll be light grey, pink and then dark grey on the bottom so with the dark grey colour to kind of pull it all together so um, and then I will do the dark grey cuffs as well and this uh, cardigan has pocketses, so I'm pretty excited about that. It's got um, knit in pocketses. So I'm so, so excited to wear this. Like, I cannot even tell you. Um, so I really should get knitting on it. And I'm saying so a lot. Uh, I really need to get knitting on this because I am absolutely dying to wear this. Like, this is my dream wearable blanket cardigan um it should come all the way down to my knees and like i said it's got about 10 inches of ease so um it should be huge and snuggly and i'm really really excited okay friends and that's about all she wrote um i don't know that there's much else really to share um check out my d stash please and um give us a thumbs up 
and uh, hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. And uh, yeah, I guess I could probably leave it there. I don't think there's much really to talk about. Um, we did see Avengers Endgame on the weekend. That was a complete roller coaster. Oh man. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to process a lot of it. Um, and I've actually been hit harder by certain things than I was expecting to. So that's kind of been something I've been grappling with as well. But I'm not going to talk about that because there's always the risk of spoilers. And if you don't want to know what goes on, um, I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> so I guess I will leave it there. I will get on and edit this so that you all can enjoy it tomorrow. Um, and yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, it means a lot. I'm so glad I can be back here having a chat with all of you. And I really hope that you are all having a wonderful time looking after yourselves and uh, with lots of lovely, lovely crafting. So until next time, happy knitting, happy crafting, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye.